innovative ways to uh, address this problem uh, of compensation. And we do not at that time, even though we did try to work on it, uh, we didn't have any uh, final recommendations that we could advance to the, to the legislature, but that is an ongoing conversation that we do need to have. The urban areas uh, have traditionally used the concept of uh, a lump sum payment. Uh, and, and I'll let Wayne speak uh, to his response on this, but for me, and in Region D's case, uh, we understand that we have certain constitutional protections. And when you ask to give up some of that land out of necessity, we want it to be treated fairly. And I am saying I have, with Tony's help and others, for a long time, I didn't plant this question, Wayne, but it, <laughs> uh, uh, this, is, this is a topic that I have been stressing that we have to we have to get smarter. We have to get uh, more effective at getting at uh, being fair to those who are called upon to sacrifice. And in general terms, what I want to say is the district that I work for uh, is existing because of seven member cities who, from the 1950s to the 1970s, paid a dollar and fifty cent for hundred valuation so that they could sacrifice and have a water supply. How many of us realize how much of a dollar and fifty cent uh, tax valuation that is? On the scale of a little bit of sacrifice, a whole lot of sacrifice, where would most people put that dollar and fifty cents? Mitch, where would you put it? It's huge, right? And that's because even today's standards, we say our school systems are broke and, and done in at a dollar and a quarter, right? That's the max, isn't it? Dollar and a quarter? Something like David, is that not approximating uh, what exactly? So we're talking about, and David was once a mayor of a town who made that sacrifice. So some of you I'm preaching to the choir, and, and, and I'm telling you, there are people in this audience who share that belief of we've got to be fair with those that are called upon to make the sacrifice, and we cannot define fair looking in the rear view mirror. We have to define fair by looking forward. So Wayne, your answer to how we compensate. <laughs> Thank you, Walt. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> um, that idea, that concept has been, continues to be widely discussed and one of the uh, things that, uh, that that discussion encounters is, okay, how's that work for highways? How's that work for hospitals? How's that work for uh, other governmental uses of real property? Uh, you start with lakes. So does every right of way for a farm to market road require uh, ongoing compensation to the landowner based on the commerce involved in Farm to market road operations, uh, hospital operations, uh, highways, tollways, and uh, that's where that gets slippery slope real fast. Whatever. Yes, uh, one last question for Mike. Wayne, uh, you talked briefly about the Oklahoma water. Could you just give us perhaps your best guess, and we understand it's a guess, as to if there is any future and, and what might be a future for Oklahoma water? Because to a lot of people, that looks like a, you know, the carrot diamond out there. It looks really close and really easy. But what do you think would be the possibilities for the future of us, the state of Texas, to carry some of that water? Well, the Tarrant Regional Water District invested $14 million in essentially seven years in litigating uh, the attempt to secure a uh, water supply from Oklahoma. Uh, there's an incredible abundance of excess water that flows into the red, surplus, unused, with no even potential use in 
possibly centuries for these volumes of water. There's, there's uh, 8 million acre feet annually that flows out of the Red River past the gauge uh, at Index, Arkansas. Um, that, that's just surplus uh, on its way to the Gulf. You know, we, we looked at, at securing that water so far south in Oklahoma that it was surplus. They couldn't swim in it, fish in it, do anything with it because it, it was already at, essentially out of the state. Um, and all we were wanting was to put our straw in where it wasn't impacted by the chlorides. And uh, that was just, uh, you know, we would speak with legislators and the executive branch in Oklahoma, and it was like, you know, uh, we want to buy this water from you. Let's monetize this resource. You do wood, paper, uh, oil and gas, minerals, uh, gypsum. Why not water too? And everybody was like, you know, this that makes total sense. Just don't make me vote for it. <laughs> so uh, it was such a political dilemma. Even the potential economic results. We we did economic studies with OU and Oklahoma State University, showing the connection between Oklahoma City, the I-35 corridor, and. Uh, the direct correlation between economic growth in North Texas and its impact on Oklahoma City and Tulsa, it was a clear correlation. By the way, that similar model takes place between North Texas and Northeast Texas as well. They're all, Dallas-Fort Worth is the fourth largest uh, in GNP of uh, uh, metropolitan areas uh, as far as economic production, fourth largest in the United States, it's the tenth largest in the world. I mean, that's how si significant the North Texas environmental and uh, economic engine is. And uh, the reason Oklahoma water was so attractive is being confronted with all of the steps, one, two, and three, Walt discussed is so daunting, so challenging, so uncertain, and so expensive that the Oklahoma strategy was worth a $14 million risk to the Tarrant Regional Water District to pursue this because if it if it were to break, you know, potential other reservoir sites in North Texas get pushed back, in Northeast Texas get pushed back indefinitely. Uh, and the permitting ch challenge is attenuant to that. So uh, we're still optimistic that there'll be some sort of softening of the Oklahoma position with regards to the true potential of a water partnership between Oklahoma and Texas. It, it makes too much sense. It's environmentally sound. It's economically sound. It has incredible potential. Uh, that someday, some way, somehow, maybe somebody who follows me and is a little nicer than I am will be more effective uh, at uh, uh, convincing uh, Oklahoma of, of our, our mutual interests and uh, be able to secure that. But short of that happening, we have to find water somehow, some way. Our current system at Tarrant Regional Water District is good through the year 2030. We meet projected demands until 2030, according to Regency planning. Okay? And I mentioned to that gentleman about the impact of conservation changing our demand outlook going forward. Our existing supply is going to be adequate probably to 2040 and beyond now. So the projects that we're looking at bringing them online, the gentleman asked about, you know, what, what if, if Marvin Nichols were to be built, when might it be built? You know, there are, I, I don't see it on the immediate horizon uh, unless something unexpected truly happens. But short of Oklahoma coming through, we're, we're going to have to work together for, uh, for the economic future and benefit of the state of Texas. We're going to have to find a way to find a way. And I think there's the other question or input. I'm going to 
going to defer the last question, obviously, um, to David Simpson. <laughs> David? And maybe it's a statement as opposed to a question. I think it's been very helpful. I, usually, I like to have the answer to my question before I ask them. Go ahead. I'd like to see a comparison of the area needed. Ratio between the area taken by the reservoir to the amount of water impounded. Compare that from Barnum Nichols to Toledo Bend, Lake Ray Hubbard, and others. And also, um, and what, what's the average depth of the, the reservoir that's projected? And, uh, and, and evaporation. And then, and the second question are we considering maybe underground aquifers? won't have such a humongous <coughs> impact upon the timber industry and our economic development here in Northeast Texas. We, we do, I, my parents live in Dallas. I grew up there, uh, except for summers and weekends, I spent in Avenue. So I think we're all going to want to consult this together. I think freedom and negoti real negotiation has been a, a really serious Well, I'd like to see comparison. Anyway, you heard me. Well, and I, and I appreciate that input. For those that I didn't uh, able, if I paraphrase it incorrectly, correct me, but uh, for Marvin Nichols, a more detailed analysis of what his capabilities and characteristics are are needed in relation to the other options that it might be weighed against. And those other options that it could be weighed against are the options of Oklahoma water that Wayne was talking about, Toledo Bend water, and the groundwater. And each of those topics were uh, beginning, that conversation began significantly or advanced significantly in that special study commission, but there was no conclusion uh, reached there other than it's deserving of a more detailed analysis. And while we share, I share that view that it's deserving of more detailed analysis, that's what the SRBA's comprehensive study is supposed to. So that question and those uh, concerns that, that we're raising tonight, we have been working as a state now going on at least since 2007 trying to get that answer. So some answers are easier to get than others. And those questions you ask, uh, we don't have easy answers to those, uh, yeah. but we're working. We're trying to work on it. Do you have any comparison between the projected ratio of surface acres needed to surface acres of water impounded compared to other reservoirs? Okay, and, and, and they're all associated with and right and. and and that is a complex conversation that goes beyond just the characteristics of a lake individually. Uh, that's what we would call water availability modeling. And uh, that analysis, Tony is an expert in, right, Tony? Uh, and, and that answer is knowable uh, one to another, but I'm telling you that we have a lot of variation, one lake to the next, so much so uh, that uh, absent the completion of that comprehensive study, we can't answer that. And those factors that you're talking about, those are part of the things that will cause some options in that comprehensive study to be perceived as more attractive or less attractive. So depending on, well, you ask, you're asking the same questions that we've been asking for a while. Experts are trying to get those answers, and once we get them, it will have an effect on uh, which one of those strategies seem to be more prudent than others. And so I guess I would say, on that note, uh, we're going to have to stay tuned because we don't have that answer tonight. So, Dick, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the um, Let's give Walt and Wayne a good answer.